Coffee too? Uh, no, thank you. So, uh, do you like any television or something? I, I mean, do you watch any shows or movies or...? <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> Jesus. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> well? Do you? What was that? I'm sorry. I don't like talking with my mouth full. Bad manners. <laughs> sorry, I was just trying to have like small talk. It was kind of random. Um, Eric. Eric. It was kind of random, Eric. <laughs> Megan, right? <laughs> but um, to answer your question. Star Trek. Really? Star Trek? Yeah, I know. I just really like the premise of the series. Especially the ones with Sir Patrick Stewart. Interesting. I mean, I always found Star Trek to be boring. Isn't it just about humans and aliens interacting? It's way more than that. It's... It's exactly the way I imagine future should be. Well, I'm gonna have to disagree. How so? Have you ever seen Star Wars? It's a far more realistic representation of what the future really is like. Hmm. Why do you say that? All I ever got out of Star Wars was someone with a little laser sword, you know, fighting against the Empire. It's a lot more than that. George Lucas created this saga of a family and the force and the political upheaval of an entire galactic empire. He, he tells a story through the cinematic masterpiece that expresses his view of what American society is really like. Hmm. Well, in that case, please explain to me how the teddy bears on Endor bested a legion of Emperor Palpatine's strongest army. Sure you don't want some? No, thanks, I'm good. Well? Well, 
with the Ewoks on Endor uh, were a result of shitty writing on George Lucas's part. Lucas thought that he could sell more toys if he created these adorable little creatures instead of writing it as the Wookiees that were intended. Anyways, my point is that unlike in Star Trek, where everything is this perfect utopia, Star Wars far more realistically reflects what society is really like. I mean, no true capitalistic society really benefits all of humanity. The governments and the people at the economic top are always trying to pursue greater power and more wealth. I mean, it's explained that way in all nine of the episodes. And even when the power in charge crumbles, a new, more authoritarian one rises from the ashes. I mean, the only way it would be anywhere near like it is in Star Trek in real life is if all the industrialized nations of the world joined together against the US to convince them to abandon their oligarchic capitalistic ways and, and take on a new, uh, new government society that pushes forth uh, empowering the people and, and helping out all of humanity and science. Wow. Does that answer your question? Plus, the Ewoks ended up aiding the Rebel Strike Force on Endor anyways. I mean, if the Rebel Strike Force had failed to destroy the Seal Generator, and thus failing to destroy the Death Star, and failed to destroy the Empire fleet that was stationed above the planet, they even killed Emperor Palpatine. Uh, if, if they'd failed at that, I mean, Han Solo and the entire Rebel Strike Force would end up as Darth Vader's laser swords target practice. It's lightsaber, by the way. You know what? You're just jealous. Because any captain in Star Trek would accomplish in one day with pure human intelligence and photon torpedo ready to detonate in just one day. What basically would take decades and magic space wizards to accomplish. Well, that makes you a liberal communist and you need to get the fuck out of my house. What the hell is going on here?
that these objects are of extraterrestrial origin. The broadcast will quiet at this time for your safety. Continue to carry out the following instructions. Special beings are now on the ground. I repeat, they are on the ground. Do not go outside. No shit. Hello, nine one one. Hello, hello. Today started out like any other day in the past three years. 
Or is it four now? I'm ashamed to admit that I lost count. Nothing seems to matter anymore. I miss you. Everything reminds me of you. The coffee in the morning, that smell alone makes me think of you. I miss you. Our bathroom, you picked the lavender. I can't say I liked it back then, but it has grown on me every day you've been gone. I miss you. Your favorite movies, your favorite books. I had to pack them in boxes because I couldn't keep looking at them anymore. Now I just look at the boxes in the living room. I can't seem to put them away. I miss you. Today started out like any other day in the past three years or so, but then I got this postcard from you. It said, wish you were here. I couldn't believe it. Could it really be you? Postcards were sent from our special place. I had to make sure. And there you were, just as the day I remembered you. Has it really been three years? Tomorrow will start like a brand new day, now that you are here with me. I have to be very discreet about this. I hope this letter finds you well. Sorry about the rudeness, Rob. Not really used to have visitors. Salmon, no worries. Thank you. Hi. Mm. Please, please do. spent decades trying to find her grave. It's a long story. Wow. Well, I got all day. Very well. A year ago, I was homeless from alcoholism. I couldn't make sense of my discharge from the Marines, so I turned to the bottle to cope. Eventually, I made a home inside of a derelict train coach. One morning as I woke up, I was startled to see a woman sitting across from me. Oh, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? I might have been hungover, but I could tell the lady was not of this place. But the real shocker was coming. My name is Mickey Emiko. I guess you have not been informed, but my family and everyone of Japanese descent, we are being relocated. We got into a heated argument for a moment. She thought she was being deported somewhere. Your great aunt was beautiful, but she seemed out of place. Mickey thought I was interrogating her because I was wearing my Marine Corps jacket. I asked her what year it was and she replied, 1942. Of course it's 1942. That's when I went holy shit and fled. Why are you so scared? You should come in before the train starts moving. And now I see where her family tradition of being a prankster comes from. Yeah, and it seems like she hadn't scared anyone in a while either. Tell me more. When I made my way back to the coach cabin, she was back in her seat. From her, I learned what happened. I myself was not aware we had put all the Japanese Americans into camps. I felt sorry for her, but I sensed she was ready to move on. 
she needed to see the outside world because it was clear to me she couldn't tell we were at an abandoned rail museum. I had to show her the truth. Nikki must be in so much shock, wasn't she? Just imagine that, being there all along, so long, decades, and none of that ever affected her. Seeing the outside for the first time since 1942 was a devastating moment for her. But I believe it's exactly what she needed to be set free. She realized it was time to join her ancestors. Mickey briefly explained the basis of her Shinto faith. She told me she would now watch over the location as a free spirit and did this improvised Shinto ritual, handed me the box and vanished. She bid me farewell as she disappeared. I see. Mickey paid her offering to the Kami for your safe passage. Her last act in this life was making sure the gods watched over you. So, do you know what's in the box? Rob, Rob open, open the box. box. My, family's My family's treasures, treasures are, now are now yours. yours. Yes, I do. Thanks to Mickey's internment camp card, I was able to find you. I felt that it was right to return it to her family. So once I got back on my feet, I started the process of tracking down her relatives and luckily I found you, since you don't live too far. I myself could not keep something like that after having such a spiritual experience. Mickey has entrusted this to you. Our family thought we lost everything in the internment camp. But thank you. You brought closure today. Even though we might never know where she's buried. But at least we know her spirit has been set free. Almost 80 years of pain can finally be healed. So... The box, you don't want it? No, it's yours now. And when you have a family, especially if you have a little girl, pass it on. Keep our family tradition alive. And when it's their time, they shall do the same. So, what now? Can you pass me that train coach? Yes. There you go. I can show you my family's greatest tradition. It's been passed down from generation to generation. That is? thinking of me during your trip to Japan. Um, I know it's the thought what counts, but I have a really weird feeling about that toy. I have a feeling it, or whatever else is, 
watching me. Will you be a witness to truth and beauty? Are you there? Phil! Witness, my beautiful lord, and the truth he shall bestow upon you. You've always told me how much you wanted to live by the water. We could fall asleep to the sound of waves crashing at the shore and awaken to the sunshine gracing us with another day. From our humble village back home to this, this was like living in a dream. And it was like the dream you don't want to wake up from. I think this is when I said, someday, soon, my sunshine, we'll be able to afford a house here. And I remembered you just smiled at me and ran off. This place, it always make us feel like the tourist here. Like this. Like this was all just an endless vacation, and I really liked that. Things were always changing around us. The people with their faces and stories. It was always something new. Someone new. Just three years ago, these buildings weren't here yet. It's called progress and back home. It was something frowned upon. I could live here forever like this. Like the tourists. We could one day live in those luxurious condos by the bay. Or those cute little houses on the gulf. We could live here forever, my sunshine. Like the tourists. This part always made me think of home people working hard, but at least here, they could do something nice with their earnings. I think this is when I said, someday soon, my sunshine will get one of those. And I remembered you just smiled at me and ran off again. You never see anyone look sad riding the way runner. I think this is when I said, someday, soon, my sunshine, we'll be able to afford one of those. And I remembered you didn't say anything. Someday, soon, once I get that job, our troubles will finally be over. I know I keep saying that, but this time, this time, I feel it's going to be good for us. We'll be able to afford one for me and one for you. A truck for me, so I can use it for work, and one for those cute little cars for you. It will happen. I believe it. We'll even be able to afford all the repairs, the maintenance, the oil changes this time. I feel it. 
field. Someday soon, we will have children and take them out there. It will be a boy and a girl, maybe twins. What do you think? I remember you didn't say much when I asked you, but I knew that someday we'd have perfect kids, the most excellent kids on the planet. They will grow bigger than us, and they will be smarter than us. And we'll watch them grow as we grow old. My sunshine. Someday, my sunshine. Get up your lazy ass and do something productive. Go out, get some fresh air. Like this? Take your camera and, I don't know, take a picture or something. I mean, do something productive, like... Oh, come on. How do you people with Asperger's even go ahead with your life? Cinema and photography might be your temporary escape from reality, but I just don't really see anybody recognizing you for it. You know what I mean? I. Where did he go? This guy never listens. Oh, pizza! Never say no to pizza. Like the good old times on set. I really do miss my phone girl. There was once a lion, and much like any other lion, he thought of himself very highly. He was a king of the jungle, and much like any other king, he was very arrogant, greedy and murderous. To show the true power within his claws, he murdered the lesser members of his kingdom. First were the zebras. They were the artists of the animal kingdom. With their black and white stripes, much like a David Lynch film, the lion thought they were pretentious and contributed nothing to the society. So the lion attacked. But with the blood on his claws, his lust and desire for more just grew. So then came the giraffes. They were the aristocrats of the animal kingdom. With their noses up high, the lion thought they were snobby and contributed nothing to the society. So the lion attacked. But with the blood gushing down his jaw, his taste and aspiration for more just grew. Finally came the monkeys. They were the peasants of the animal kingdom, and much like their human descendants, they contributed absolutely nothing to the society, so the lion attacked. This is where we come to the turn of the tale. As a monkey escaped his deadly claw, it ran, hid, and watched as the lion then ripped apart his family. He angrily shook his hairy fist and swore vengeance. Without thinking, the monkey jumped back down, and the lion swallowed the monkey whole. That makes the end of this tale. Sometimes the vengeance isn't the answer. Not everyone can be a lion, but everyone can be a monkey. Don't be the monkey.
Morning, Mimi. Free me, boy! Did you talk? Yes. Did you talk? Where are you? Mimi? Hi, Mimi. So, so I got some questions. So, are you, are you some sort of god? I don't know. You tell no, me. You're just a cat. So, like, do you know answers to the universe? Um, eat a bag of dicks. Oh, that's rude. So, what advice can you give me? Oh. Wait, that's not really advice. Oh. So, how are you talking to me? You don't know either, huh? I mean, I, uh, had my incident this morning. Another incident! Yes, another incident! Ah, uh. uh, yeah. Okay, I know. Well, you know, my life's not really great right now. Right now? You mean anyway, the last no, 30 no, years? Me. Like, what, what, what do you, what do you do? What do you like? Catnip, food, oh, and taking a dump in your shoes. Treats. Why? Why did I not get that? Cat treats. That's what else do you like? Wait, wait. What you don't? What don't you like? Dogs. And when you throw your socks on my head. You don't like? I want to throw my shirt over your head and pretend that you're blind, huh? Because I see what you well, do to your socks, man. You see what I do with my socks. Why would I do that to my shirt? Why in the hell would you do that to your socks? I... You got a valid point. So you see that. Alright, next time I will do that in front of you. Okay. Now listen, bud. Yeah, you're a good... You know, you're, you're always been a good boy. and you Oh, you like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. You're my best friend, too. You're my best friend, I guess. <laughs> yeah. When I when I adopted you that day, when you were a kitten, you were just a sweet... Your face is ugly. Did I tell you that? Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that one before. So, I have an idea. Can you help me get a date? Well, you're not going to get one on your own. Hmm. Okay. So what should I do? How can I uh, ask that girl out? First, we gotta clean your face up, and you gotta ask her out. Well, just ask her out. That's that's great advice. Just this guy. Well, we're gonna clean this apartment together. <laughs>
Yeah, I would love to go to dinner with you. <laughs> Finally got the courage. From who? My best friend. That was my new little boy. Oh, you're a sweet little guy, Mimi Jr. Can I have some love? Great. Hey, Mimi Jr. You would have loved your uh, your brother. If you ever got to meet him. He was a good boy. Are you my new daddy? We all are nothing but stardust. Somehow Palpatine returned? <clears throat> what? That movie last night. Oh yeah, that movie. It was, uh, it was really good. What the fuck? It was terrible. Oh yeah, or terrible. You know, I don't know. I, I kind of don't care. Mm, apparently not. I waited years for this. I know that it was just a movie made uh, to sell action figures and spaceships to nerds, right? Are you kidding me? It's a movement and a cultural phenomenon that started in 1977, was tarnished by an evil corporation, soiled, violated, shitted on, just to make money with no regard for the character, the story, or the vision of George Lucas. <sighs> Carrie. George Lucas sold Lucasfilm for like billions of dollars and uh, I don't really feel sorry for him and uh, frankly I don't think he really gives a shit. I mean really. He was bullied into doing that to avoid backlash from the fans on how he handled the prequels. Ugh, but this? Ugh, this is fucking worse. Says who? You? I can't believe I'm actually doing this but please explain to me how this is worse. I mean, I really want to know. The sequel trilogy is nothing but a big fuck you to any and all continuity previously established in six films. The whole story arc behind Rey made no sense whatsoever. They hinted at so many different things that it seemed like they didn't even know where to take the story in the first place. I'm just, I'm just disappointed in how everything turned out. They had the opportunity to take Rey 
an absolute nobody and have her take down an empire, both inspiring and uplifting. Or they could have established her as a Palpatine and had her go through the same trials and tribulations just like Anakin and Luke went through. You know, kind of like a classic story hero progression arc. Disney could have had a masterpiece. Instead, they give Rey no real motivation besides some mysterious dead parents and the Destiny Vader's grandson's love interest? Really? Oh my god, a completely original female character ruined. I just, I feel bad for Daisley Ridley and Kelly Marie Tran for how poorly written their characters were. It's just, oh my gosh. Where are you going? I'm gonna take this. Okay, so like in the Force Awakenings, for it, for instance, <laughs> get it? Force. <laughs> so we're introduced to Rey, and her her hero's journey is just complete and utter nonsense. You know, you keep saying that. I I don't think it was that bad. I kind of like that one. I mean, you know, she's a good role model for girls. A strong female character. Well, she discovers in that episode by chance that she is strong in the Force and literally by sheer coincidence overpowers that emo fuckboy with zero training. In that episode, the whole plot point that she misses her family is led to believe that it's going to be some major element in the trilogy. They should have hinted that she was a Palpatine back there and let her have her own epic reveal upon a certain death situation and to, to kind of build suspense that the Emperor was returning in some way, not somehow. Instead, they just shoehorn everything into the last movie to undo The Last Jedi, which if you ask me was fucking horseshit too. What are you doing? Here, correct my feet, dude. I'm listening. I, I got a piece of popcorn stuck in my teeth. You were on the last Jedi? Oh, right. That movie was nothing but a sad turd. That fucking Rian Johnson man cramming in a typical Disney manure. Poorly written Rose Tico as some wannabe fucking princess made Luke fucking Skywalker into a chicken shit possible nephew murderer and then you have the resistance and the order making tactical blunders that no military commander would make and made General Hux into a complete and total bitch. And, and, and what? who the fuck is Snoke anyways? The trilogy made no effort to explain him whatsoever. me up because of Emperor Planting, but clearly this is a bigger issue. Emperor Palpatine. Pal? Patine. Palpatine! You know, if you say Palpatine's name seven times fast, he'll appear in a mirror and shock you right in the pussy. <laughs> You're not funny. His return was so fucking unnecessary. It, it just makes no sense. He was dead. And, and none of the sequels made any effort to explain how he returned in that mangled fucking body on fucking life support. How did he survive being thrown down the Death Star in a subsequent explosion? Then somehow, between the Phantom Menace and a New Hope, he got frisky in bed, had a son who then bore him his granddaughter, Ray. It, just, it makes no sense. It goes against his nature in general and the Sith Order. You know, I always thought Palpatine had, like, more than one kid anyways. I mean, the Sith Lords, they're like Republicans, right? Mm -hmm.